Hey, welcome everybody. So, uh, Warlord Games is about to release a game they are calling Victory at Sea. And uh, I've been seeing some gameplay videos. Now, as far as I know, the game is not available. You have to pre-order it. But uh, I had shown this book in my bookshelves of shame. And I had a few people tell me, oh, it's being released, re-released by Warlord Games. And after watching the gameplay videos, I can tell you that um, it's either not the same game or they've changed the rules a lot. Especially with torpedoes. Uh, and one of the gameplays I watched, I mean, whole battleships were basically going down in one salvo of torpedoes that were hitting more like ICBMs. So I want to show you a quick playthrough of the original game because that's not the only thing that changed in the game. Uh, I think how you start the game, though, I, I noticed that it had changed. Uh, I think even there were some changes with the movement where you only had to go one inch instead of two inches before you could turn. Uh, and just some other little knick-knack things. Now, the basic rules in this game only take up about three pages. And I mean, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, you have your turn. You have your movement phase. And you have your attack phase. And then it talks about hits, critical hits, and crews, and so forth, and end phase. And that's it. We're on page 10. Everything else is special actions, which I'm not going to get into this video. I may get into it later. But for purposes of this demonstration, what I have here is this is a British battleship. Uh, I think this is the King George. This is a Japanese battleship. This is the Nagato. And then I just have two, two uh, ships representing destroyers. I don't know if they're actually destroyers or not. They may be cruisers. These are from Axis and Allies War at Sea miniature game. And the thing I will say about these ships is you ever, sometimes you buy a game and you never really get to play it or you don't really like the way it plays. But man, the components are excellent, and you just can't get rid of them. And that's what happened with me with uh, uh, Axis and Allies War at Sea, is I bought up a whole bunch of these ships. And now that I've seen the ones that Warlord Games has done for the new Victory at Sea with the, uh, they look like they have a uh, spare tire around them, or a flotation skirt like little kids wear, I'm so glad I kept these because I won't be playing with those if I if I use their roots. I like some of the components in what I see, like the markers and the uh, uh, the turn the turn angles and things like that. I think that could really make the game easier. But I do not like the ships. I I even saw one video where they said the the ships were warping. You know, the big balloon around the side of them was warping. And they didn't know how they were going to fix it, so they would lie flat. These, I had a couple of these that weren't flat, and I did the hot water treatment, and they're fine. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes you can find some of these for sale on uh, Macari, obviously on eBay. But they can get kind of expensive because they usually are sold based on the names of the ship. So like the Nagato, this might run you $16. But it's pre-painted. There's some other ones like the Yamato and the other some of the other heavier battleships that can run, you know, one ship can run you 50 bucks like this. I mean, I have a whole buttload of them, and I may do a video to show you guys my collection. Uh I'm not necessarily planning on selling any because one of the things is a lot of the nationalities, uh like Germany and France and some of the other ones. I don't know if Warlord Games is even going to be releasing yet. Their their initial box has, uh, I think, the Japanese and the Americans. It's called The War in the Pacific. But having said all that, let's get started with the game. Okay, so we are going to begin with the initiative phase. That part has remained the same as far as I can see. 
It says the initiative phase is to use to resolve any actions that do not require players to make any choices. At the start of each turn, both players roll for initiative using 2d6. Any ties are re-rolled. So they have changed that. Now you simply roll 1d6. Uh, but this one, we're going to roll 2d6. Okay, so I'm going to use the red for the Japanese and the white for the Americans. So the Japanese have five and the Americans have four. So the Japanese would win the initiative. It says if a fleet has any civilian shipping, it will suffer a minus one penalty. We don't have that. Movement plays. The player who wins the initiative phase by rolling higher than his opponent will decide whether to move a ship first or force his opponent to do so. Players then alternate moving their ships. First, a player nominates one of his ships and moves it. Then his opponent nominates one of his and moves that. This continues till all ships have been moved. Note that a particularly large fleet may still have ships to move, in which case they continue moving all their ships. So now we are going to go into movement. The Japanese in this game, I think they are going to elect to cause the Americans to have to move first. Okay, so I just perused the movement rules. So you do only have to move one inch in this game and you go from the bow basically, uh, but you must move at least one inch straight the maximum you can move is your total speed, which for the American uh, battleship, I'm using an Iowa class battleship. It can go seven inches. It has a turning of one. What the turning means is how many knocks you can go left or right uh, on the turning dial, which I don't have the turning dial. I'd have to photocopy it and cut it out the book. But if you get the book, it is in there. So I'm just going to kind of wing it. But, uh, so it says you can only turn once in each movement phase. Now that is also different than what I've seen in some of these, uh, victory at sea games where they're moving two inches, then turning, then moving two, then turning, then moving two, then turning. You can't do that, right? You can't do that in the real victory at sea. It says you can only turn once in the movement phase, each ship. So the Americans are going to move first. We're going to move these destroyers, which are uh, Fletcher class destroyers. So I tried to match them up. They have a speed of seven, which is their maximum. They must go at least one inch, but they have a turning of two. So this destroyer, right? So you must go straight at least one inch right here. And so we go by the bow in this game. And the new one, you go by the bridge, which I don't know how you know where that's at. So that's one inch that he has went. He is going to go another four inches. Right now he can turn two turns, two knocks basically. But he can't turn twice, three, four, five times. Turning of a two means he gets to go two basically degrees. So for this example, if he wants to turn now, he can go one, two. A battleship could only do one of those, okay? This ship is going to do the same thing. He is going to come up. This one, though, is going to come up five. Again, he wants to turn two knocks. So he will go one, two. The American battleship must move up one. And that's all he's going to do. So basically, the destroyers are creating a screen for their battleship. The Japanese can now move. The Japanese are running, I am running uh, Kagero class destroyers for the Japanese. Again, speed of seven, turning of two. So they will move their destroyers up into action. They must go at least one. So they will go there. And guess he'll go one more there. And then he'll turn two one two well that's probably so one two right because you're trying to basically do a, up to a 45 degree turn so this one is going to repeat 
So he's going to go one, two. So he's went at least his one inch. He's going to go another inch. And now he can turn two. One, two. Now, I don't know if the people playing the game were playing it wrong. Where they basically had the, the ship turning and turning. Maybe they thought two meant you could go this and then turn and go there. Get another one. That's not what it means. There's a dial. And the dial means how many turns on that dial you can make. But you can only do one turn per movement, right? And again, these are this is the real victory at sea. Not I don't I don't know what the demo game is. If somebody wants to send me a copy, I will read it and I will play a copy for you. Warlord Games, please send it to me. Now we are also going to move the uh, Japanese battleship, which this is the. Uh, the Japanese battleship I have here is the uh, Nagato class battleship. It only has a speed of five, and again, it has a turn of one. So, what it must move at least one. So, it will move up three. Okay. And it is actually going to start to turn one. So that turn would be like that. And one of the things they tell you in the rules is these ships cannot move very quickly. They have a lot of inertia that they have to overcome to make turns. So it is very difficult for them to turn. They cannot move like sports cars like you see in the game. And again, I don't know if that's the rules or people are playing it wrong. So we're done with the movement. Next, we're going to go to the attack phase. We've done initiative, movement, attack phase and then the only other phase is in phase okay so i've looked at the firing rules the japanese are going to begin by firing the uh nagato and again this is another difference from the new rules and the old rules so i want you to pay attention so now the nagato has a firing arc which is basically 45 degrees from the front and I will show you this because I can't get it here but if you look back here you see these are your firing arcs so you've got basically at 45 degrees kind of measured from the bow here right and you measure from the center of your ship to the center of your opponent's ship now this is also different you cannot pre-measure okay so I'm watching these playthroughs of the new victory at sea and one guy says, oh, well, yeah, you can pre-measure because they had firing control and radar and stuff, which is really kind of ridiculous because firing control and radar had nothing to do with your guns. You know, I'm sorry, but they didn't, they, you can't pre-measure. And so what you have to do is you have to nominate your targets for each gun you're going to fire. Now, obviously, you can see from my model, this ship has two turrets in its front arc, right? So anything basically here, it can fire at. And it's got these two turrets. Now, if I go to the rule book, it says it has an A turret with two 16-inch guns, a B turret with two 16-inch guns, which would be these. And then you'd have your X and Y turrets, which are these, right? Very simple. So you nominate which turrets are going to hit eligible targets. So in this example, he can pretty much hit everything, I'd say, but this one. The range on these battleships is 43 inches, so this thing could hit something in my backyard. So I don't have to worry about that. But when you're going center to center, this one would technically not be eligible because you have to measure to the center of it. So he couldn't hit it with, with these guns in that front arc like that. You know, if he was a little further up, he could. And he, he might be able to hit it with his uh his secondary guns, which I haven't we haven't got to the secondary guns yet. But uh for this example, he has to nominate what he's gonna do with those two guns. So he is going to put both of those on this ship here. Right? He's going to try to take out that destroyer, you know, before it can do it can do him some harm these two in the rear have no target right and that was another problem i saw i saw one guy 
say, oh, he has five turrets and he unloaded on the, on the ship right here with all five turrets, like the ones here could just turn all the way around. Now, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they could, but the way the arc looked on the card, that didn't look like a legal shot to me. So anyway, he's going to nominate these two. And again, you have to nominate actually before you check the arc and before you check the range. Okay, and this is the old, this is the old version of War at Sea. So say for example, I nominated one gun on here and one gun on there. And then when I checked the arc from center to center, this was out of arc, this shot would have been lost, right? So you're not allowed to do that. But for this purpose, I just wanted to show you guys how you determine that. So with regards to his secondary armament, I don't have, I, don't, I can't see the, uh, I don't see the uh, arcs for that. So I'm assuming the secondary armament is in the middle because I haven't read all the way through the rules. Uh, but I'm going to give the secondary armament a 360 and it, it has a tech dice of seven. So the secondary armament, we will say, can target that. So we will target that with his secondary armament. The two in the back cannot do anything. Now, these two guns in the front, these two turrets, they both get two attack dice. So that is four attack dice. Okay, so we're going to resolve this one first. With those four attack dice, it has, it has damage dice of three. And we will get to that. So let's go, now we're gonna look at how to do the attack. Each weapon listed on the ship has attack dice scored listed. This is the number of dice rolled every time the weapon is fired. When attack dice are rolled, the resulting number on each die is compared to the target's target score. So let's check the target score for Fletcher class destroyers. Their target score is a six plus, right? A hit has been scored, so for every attack dice that equals or beats the target score, a hit has been scored. So you need sixes to hit those little bitty destroyers. However, each attack die will be modified as follows. Now here's the modifiers, and there's only four. Stream range, nope. Long range, nope. Fast moving targets, targets that move more than seven inches. Neither one of them did that. Large silhouette, target has its beam facing attacker. Neither one of them quite have their being facing the attacker. So once a player has scored an amount of hits on a target, it is time to see which damage he has caused. So let's roll to see if we score any hits on this small destroyer. We need sixes, basically. Now this, this ship has a special called AP, which I might use in this example, because uh, I think it might come in, uh, it might come in handy. Well, let me, I'm going to be right back. Okay, so I was able to double check some things. And the secondary guns do have 360, meaning they can hit any target in, in range on any of the arcs. The other ones, the main guns, are what use the arcs. And AP gives them a plus one on their damage dice, but they need sixes. So they score one six. Now, for every six that you score with those guns, the Nagato, or every hit that it scores, it will roll, one second. For every hit it scores, it rolls three damage dice. So now it gets three damage dice. Now we are looking at for damage, we are going to look at the target ship. I believe the target ship's armor. I just want to double check that. So after we do that, has scored an amount of hits. It is time to see which dam. Every weapon has a damage dice. Number of dice rolled for every attack dice. So we got our three. When damage dice are rolled, the resulting number on each die is compared to the target's armor score. For every damage die that equals a beast or armor score, one point of damage is deducted. 
right? So the armor score on these uh, Fletcher class destroyers is two plus. And we get a plus one on these because we have armor piercing. So basically all three of those are hits. We didn't roll any sixes. So this takes three hits of damage. Now for these ships, uh, let's see here. So for Fletcher, the maximum damage that it can take is three. So this Fletcher right here is, is destroyed. It was basically put out of action before it could fire its guns. Again, I don't know if that's been changed in the new one. I know I saw them marking off numbers and numbers and numbers. Here the numbers I think are a lot smaller. These battleships can take a lot of damage. I think they can take up to 35 or 40 hits. The destroyers, not so much. So now we're going to work out that one. We are using the main weapons, and in this case, the main weapons, he is going to roll seven dice for his secondary armament, still needing sixes, but this time you only get one damage die per hit. And he got no hits. So this one is unscathed. Now, the turn alternates to the Americans. The Americans can now nominate one of their ships and fire their guns. The Americans are going to come right in real quick with their battleship. And instead of targeting the destroyers, I don't know. Should he target the other destroyers or should he target the battleship? The battleships are hard to kill. But if he lets this guy go undamaged, maybe he won't have his destroyer soon. So he is going to target this battleship and see if he can put some critical damage on it. He's got his two guns in the front. This is a Iowa class battleship. So his two turrets, he gets three attack dice per turret. He's going to put them on there. He also has his secondary armament, which he gets six attack dice. So we will roll the secondary armament separately. But he is, he is nominating both turrets and his secondary armament on that. So, for the two turrets, he gets he has six attack dice, and the target armor on the Nagato, the target number for the Nagato is only a four plus. And because it is, I think, because it is a large ship, he will get a modifier. No, it says its beam is facing. It's not. They're facing each other forward. There's no range modifiers. So, but he does have armor piercing as well. So let's roll these. He needs four pluses. So he has scored one, two, three hits. Right? So for that, for those three hits, and I don't think the six matters unless it's on the damage die for uh, critical. So let me double check that. Yeah, on damage dice, if there's a six, it's a critical. So for these three hits, the Iowa class gets three damage dice for each hit. So that's nine damage dice he now gets to roll. But now, the Nagato's armor is... The Nagato class battleship's armor is... Five plus. So he needs five pluses, but he gets one for armor piercing. So that means he needs to roll at least fours in order to damage it. Okay. So all of these become, these two become hits. This is a natural six. That may be a critical. These two become hits because he needs five, but it's plus one. And then this one becomes a hit. So in a total, that is two, four, five hits and one critical off of there when the critical is what you need because the Nagato has a total armor of 40 so we're going to take 5 from 40 which will bring it down to 35 actually 6 so 6 from 40 brings it down to 34 which we don't know it may come in the hand come in port and once the torpedoes are launched we do have a critical which is that 6 
Now, I'm going to see if this is different than the way they do it. So it says, may cause a critical. He then rolls a four higher in addition to causing normal damage. So we will roll that again to see if it causes critical damage. You need a four or five. He did. So now that he wrote that five, we have to roll on the critical damage table. And that part is the same. Where you have to take those sixes and now you got to try to get fours. So now we're going to roll two dice on the critical damage table. I have five that I rolled here. So that means it is crew. We now roll a D6 on the crew table. And I rolled a one. One through two, there is a fire. Damage is zero. It loses two crew and a fire starts. Wow, that is not good. Okay, so a fire has broken out on the Nagato, as you can see here. I will explain how we resolve the fire later. Uh, I don't think it's anything that's going to affect it right now. Let me check. For every fire, so they, they will have a chance to try to extinguish the fire. But the fire has started. And that was actually what, what uh, they were hoping to do. So now I am going to put uh, markers here to indicate they've been activated. This ship is destroyed. I will move it off next turn to indicate that it has sunk. But for now, it is kind of there blocking. It is now time for another Japanese ship to nominate its fire. We have this ship here, which is going to nominate the battleship. Uh, although I don't know if it's quite in range uh, for its side guns. It's front arc. Let's check the arc because it's nominating both of those front guns on the battleship. And center it has to be center to center and that is out of range it has no shot and that's why you can't pre-measure it it has no shot this one is going to nominate this here with its two front guns and its secondary weapons oh wait it's not his turn we're going to switch to this one oh, that's right so this one is going to nominate here and he's going to try to get his two rear guns, his secondary gun, and his uh, front. So the fronts are right here. Those are not going to hit. So we're going to take those two off of this Fletcher class destroyer. Let me see how many guns this Fletcher has. Wow, the only thing the Fletcher has is secondary armament, which it basically has uh, 360 degrees. It has secondary armament, anti-aircraft gun, and then port and starboard torpedoes. So I wonder if he is in range of his torpedoes. Because the secondary armament is only one die. So let's see if we can do the torpedoes in this game to show you the difference. Hopefully we're in range. Uh, our launch from the port or starboard of a vessel or from the front if it is as full details of torpedoes can be found in the advanced ruse chapter. Let's check that. Torpedoes, unguided underwater missiles, declared in the same way as any attack. When the attack is made, place a torpedo spread counter in contact with a single target vessel that is within 10 inches and in the attacker's torpedo arc. So it has to be within 10 inches, which that is within 10 inches, and the torpedo arc. So this would be the starboard side, I believe. That would be, that would definitely be within the arc. Matter of fact, the main battleship would be within the arc. But since I've already nominated 
this destroyer I will stick with that so once you do that the counter should be placed along the target's beam only if the vessel making the torpedo attack would normally be making beam attacks against it well I'm not going to place it along the beam because I don't think that would consult it's not quite enough to be in the beam attack you'd have to be able to line it up in there and these torpedoes if they're coming from here or there are probably not going to be able to turn around and hit that beam so you get extra damage if it's in the beam in the end phase roll attack dice for the torpedo spread so now the attack dice for the torpedoes do not get rolled till the end phase which was another thing they were doing differently in the other the, the new victory at sea they were launching torpedoes and immediately exploding them well that's not what you do you place your your torpedo token and then in the end phase you roll all your torpedoes so you may have multiple ships that have had torpedoes sent at them but it's not till the end phase after everyone is fired that you resolve these torpedoes again i don't have the rules but i'm just telling you what the 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 original victory at sea how it played right so it says in the end phase roll attack dice for the torpedo spread these attack dice do not use the normal modifiers detailed on page seven instead a plus one bonus is gained if the torpedo spread counter is placed on the target's beam we're not on the beam damage dice are then rolled as normal and the effects of the hits are worked out accordingly so that will get resolved later so we put that there he also has his secondary gun which is only one die which i think he needs a six so he rolled a five i don't know if the fletcher has any specials that would make that a six let me check so the fletcher has agile radar and sub hunter which I'm not, I don't really think none of them are going to affect this attack, but I will check real quick. Uh, Agile. Well, that's something with to do with the movement. Radar. At long range, at night. And Sub Hunter. So that's for Submersible. So none of that will affect it. He rolled a five. He needed a six with that. So he missed. So his turn is resolved. Now it goes back to this ship, which would probably not be there if I had worked out that torpedo hit, right? This would probably be off the map, but it gets its shot now. So this can definitely not get its torpedoes on anybody. It's not in, it's not far enough ahead to get its torpedoes on anybody. It is a, I think these are, uh, See what kind of Japanese destroyers we have. Uh, I am using the Kagero class destroyer. It only has secondary armament. It has its torpedoes and its AA guns and depth charges. None of that's going to make a difference. So it's secondary armament. It will. Well, what is the range on its secondary armament? I can't measure it, but I can at least see what it is to see if I think it is in range. 12 inches so yeah he could do his secondary armament on the main battleship it's only a one attack die and one defense die so no he'll put it here maybe he'll get a lucky shot so he needs a six he rolled a three so that did nothing okay so now everybody has had their movement everybody has had their attack except for the ship that was destroyed one of the americans have lost a destroyer already we are now in the end phase okay so we are entering the end phase the first thing we have to do is resolve this torpedo attack so for the fletcher class destroyer they are going to get five dice for their torpedoes we are going to do this normally now remember this is a six plus the torpedoes do not have any ability to help them with the attack although they do have armor piercing which will help them with damage they are one shot meaning you only get to use your torpedoes once during the game and that are that is it so they need at least one six to have any kind of effect 
And so we did get one six. So for that one six, we now check the number of damage dice that are rolled. And I think this may be something else they did different, which I will show you in a minute. So for the torpedoes, every damage die you roll four dice. Okay. Now, what I saw them doing in the game was they would roll four dice and then they'd start adding it up like 6, 11, 12, 13. That's not right. At one point, I think they said every damage dice just did a flat score of 6. Which, I mean, that's not right either. So, that's not the rules in victory at sea. So, if you, if you see historical gamers or groanards groaning because these torpedoes look like cruise missiles, that's why they're groaning. You are going to roll four dice. Each dice that hits or penetrates does one damage. Okay, so we're going to roll these four. We have armor piercing, so we add one to all of that. So that becomes, this one becomes a four. This one becomes a six. Right, and this becomes a three. And this becomes a, well, a one is always a miss, I think. So now, we go to this destroyer's profile. I already know it's gone because it can only take three damage. But we go to his profile anyway. And that is a Kajiro class destroyer. It has a armor of two plus only and it can take three damage. So anything two or higher would have destroyed it. That one, I don't know. I think when you're rolling for hits, one is always a miss, and I think one is always a miss in general. But either way, it takes three damage. This goes down, and it will, in this instance, immediately sink since we are in the cleanup phase. That's when I remove them. Now, any ship that has specials critical hits can now try to resolve them so on this ship they are going to get a chance to try to put this fire out that is not the same as damage control or damage repair that is a separate row fires require a row to put out each fire there is a separate row and let's just take a look here in each end phase roll 1d6 for each fire now that's important because normally with damage control you can only roll for one thing you got to pick what you're going to try to repair and then you roll with fires you can roll 1d6 for each fire but they only have one fire it says roll 1d6 you add your command score and you need a seven or more well all of these ships that we're playing has a command score of four which I don't know what the command score is in the new one. So they need a seven or more, which means you need at least a three to put out the fire. He rolls a six. So the fire will have been put out, right? So as we enter into the next turn, right? If we were to start turn two, which I'm not going to do, I'm going to wrap this up. You would see that the battle has evened up. Each side still has one battleship relatively intact, although the, 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 the is that the Nagoro? I keep getting it mixed up. The, uh, the Nagato class battleship, its damage is down to 34 from 40, and it has lost two crew. This battleship here, the Iowa class battleship, has taken no damage whatsoever so that is the real <laughs> that is the real victory at sea guys this is a good system right there are rules for airplanes and submersibles and a lot of other things this is a good system and it really pains me to see people playing this new victory at sea uh, and you know, you have torpedoes going off like intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? That that's not how they how they should be depicted. Uh, you know, I like Warlord games. I like a lot of their. I like boat action. Okay, I really think I I just like boat action. I know there's a lot of historical players that don't like boat action, and that's their prerogative. I like boat action. 
okay it allows you to play World War II and play it quickly and fun and thematically but every game is not boat action and unfortunately you know there's this thing this design theory in in, in warlord games headquarters that anytime you tweak a game anytime you make a new game anytime you revise a game you've got to bring it closer to boat action and i just i just don't like that you know that every game is not boat action so i hope you guys enjoyed this uh leave your comments and questions below don't forget to subscribe uh I may try to put together a campaign, a World War II campaign with some fleet battles. Because I really like Victory at Sea. Take care. God bless.